Okay, so if you saw the thumbnail, then I have some explaining to do. And I promise this was not my fault. It wasn't even my intent. So there's this website called Bitter Bros. I just got an email from the website. I don't even think I've ever really gone to it. And I saw there was a live online auction. And there was several Afterburner Deluxes. Now I know what you're thinking. Afterburner Deluxe is so big. It's so cumbersome. Why in God's name would you ever want that in your house? Well, I really didn't think I would win. I put a bid out there for, I don't know, I think it was around $300 and I kind of forgot about it. And then I get this call one day and the guy's like, hey, um, I'm calling from Bitter Bros. I'm just wondering uh, if you saw your invoice. And I'm like, I didn't. I didn't win anything from Bitter Bros. I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, hey, can you just check your spam folder? So I look at my spam folder and sure enough, there's an email in there saying, congratulations, you won the Afterburner Deluxe. So needless to say, I'm like freaking out because there's not that much space in here and that thing's a big cabinet, but it is a cabinet I've wanted for a really long time. Is it practical? No, but it has major nostalgia for me. So I've told this story before, but my grandfather and I, we used to go to Dream Machine in Lincoln, Rhode Island. That was the arcade in my town. And he was sort of really big into fighter jets. I got into the things he was into. And when we'd go to the arcade, we'd play that game together. And we just had a lot of great memories. Now he's since passed, but um, his memory is always with me. And I just thought, man, if I had that, that'd be really cool because I have really deep rooted feelings that are tied to that cabinet and that experience I used to have with my grandfather when I was a kid. So, well, now I have it. So anyways, it came and believe me, it had a bunch of like things wrong with it because I mean, that was, I, I bid $300 because I was like, oh man, like I don't think the motion works. It's missing this back panel in the back. It's like the plastic panel. And if you remember, it's kind of blue and it has the F-14 Tomcat in the back. And uh, yeah, so there's a lot of work to be done. As a matter of fact, it showed up dead on arrival. It didn't even power on. I, there was actually not even a power cord. So I'll show you, we'll, we'll go over and look at it in a second. It's on the other side of the garage. But man, this thing is big. The good news is the motion does not work. That's actually not good news, that's bad news. But there was an extra motor that came with it. So I'm hoping that that motor is good. Now keep in mind, this machine has two motors. It has one to um, make the cabinet go uh, front to back, and then it has one that makes it go side to side. So I only have the side to side or roll motor. I don't have the pitch motor, I think it's pitch. So hopefully the pitch motor works, if that's even what it's called. I think that's what it's called. So yeah, this, this cabinet, man, if, if you are big into arcade games from this time period, then you know this was like the hot cabinet. It also was really expensive. It was featured in movies like Terminator 2. Like everybody pretty much knows this cabinet and they happen to have one at my arcade. And so there you have it. Now I have one, but now we got to fix it up. So let me go over there and show you what it's all about. And uh, I don't know, maybe we can make some progress tonight during this video. Okay guys, I was debating on how to shoot this, but I think I'm just gonna go handy cam. So I already started to kind of do work on it. There's the bottom piece that actually goes at the bottom of the cockpit. Now, what I noticed though, is that the rubber wheel that's supposed to drive the actual game is missing. So not only is the motor dead, but the wheel that goes right there is missing. And then underneath here, there's a spring that kind of sits right underneath that piece. So what's interesting is there's wheels like right there and right over there. If you look real close, you can see the wheels. And I think, I don't know, I would think you'd be able to just manually move it, but I don't know if maybe it's just been stationary for so long that it just won't move. But the good thing is the motor, there's an extra one. So this is the one that came with it. So this is what I mean where it's supposed to have a wheel on it. That's what it's supposed to look like. So that's the actual motor that this came with, the motor replacement. Now, like I said, when I got it, it didn't power on because it didn't have a power cable. So I, you know, kind of janky put a power cable on it just for now. And I bypassed the switch because the switch was broken. So I did that and the game actually did power up after that so 
The game board works, which is good. So that's positive. Um, it is missing the artwork piece that goes right here. And there's, I think there's a red light and a blue light. I can't remember if they're both red or not, but there's a piece that goes there, but the light bulbs are actually missing. So there's no light bulbs. And I'm gonna have to see if I can get the piece of artwork that goes right there. Now you'll notice there's also no roof. So um, there's a roof piece that goes on it. And then there's also this piece in the back. I haven't cleaned this by the way, this is exactly how I got it. Um, so, that, so that I think is just dirty, but then there's a piece that goes right here too. So I'm gonna contact Galloping Ghost and see if they can, you know, sort of create a new one for me because they did my grid topper and they kicked butt at that. So we'll see. So anyways, I have it sitting on a pallet right now and you can see there's some damage on it. Like you can see that piece is damaged. So I'm, it's, it's gonna be some work. Thing is though, here's what's crazy. I'm gonna hop in this thing. Thing is it's on a slant right now. So it's kind of goofy. Okay, oh God. You know, I remember this thing being a lot bigger as a kid. <laughs> My knees are like in my mouth. I'm trying to coin it up. Oh yeah. So, the start button's right here. Get ready. So it, 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 it works. I mean, that's good, right? So, let's see, I'll show you that you can fly the plane here. Let's see. I'm holding the camera with my hand, so. Yeah, so it works. I don't know if the crash, the, um, Force feedback, no, the force feedback in the stick doesn't work. I'm pretty sure it had force feedback in the stick, just like the um, the stand-up that I had. The stand-up actually had it. So anyways, it plays, all the speakers work, but like I said, you have no light bulb there and no light bulb there. So, but surprisingly, you know, normally the lights on the coin door are, are out and those are working, so, and the whole like little coin area little attendant coin area thing works. The shifter works as well. So that's kind of cool. I don't know if you can zoom in on that. Sorry for the shaky camera. There we go. But there's also some rear speakers right there and right there. So this thing sounds really good actually, believe it or not. So let me show you the back real quick and then I'll show you kind of what's going on back there because I had a couple problems on the back. Oh God. Oh. Okay, so side artwork, you know, still looking bright and tight and ready to fight. Let's go to the back here and I'll show you what's going on. The artwork here looks pretty good. I really want to get this thing moving tonight. Do you know how badly I want to put that motor in? I have no idea what I'm doing, by the way. Like, absolutely no idea. This is uncharted territory for me. Got your serial number still. So let me show you what's going on right here. So the PCB is right here on the right. This is the main PCB that drives the cabinet it does have a switching power supply i think this is a driver board and then i think that is you can see they're disconnected back there that actually drives those motors now i did try to plug it in and it kind of blew it blew the um circuit breakers which are actually there's there's like four or five different individual circuit breakers in here but yeah i mean it's not the cleanest thing in the world but i mean the functional game part is a plus the game functions, so I'm feeling like that's a win already, but the motors, if you ever come across these anywhere, you'll know the motors are usually the thing that's not working. So, I don't know, I'm hoping that we can get this fixed pretty quick. So anyways, that's kinda what I wanted to show you guys. Um, I did do something kinda interesting. I'll show you something really neat. So on the side of this cabinet, excuse all my crap, here, we're gonna go down here really quick. I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see it. So right here, there's an RGB video out and an audio out. So I wanted to see if that would work. So I hooked up this portable subwoofer to it and it actually does work. So there we go. So yeah, I put that little sub back there. Obviously I'm not gonna keep it there, but I just wanted to see. So that's pretty cool. So if for some reason your speakers were not working, watch, I'll show you. So the volume is in the panel right here. I'm gonna turn the volume off. And you'll see the subwoofer is still on, but check this out. So if for some reason like your audio amp wasn't working in this, it sends the raw audio out of that um, RC, RCA connector. So if I connect the speakers for this again, oh, it should work, huh? What happened there? Uh, hello? That should have worked. Why is that not working? Did I plug in the wrong thing? Oh, there we go, okay. So the audio now is just coming out of these guys. So originally I didn't think the audio was gonna work, so I was gonna do this for now. 
Just put a speaker right here, keep the sub right there, and put another speaker right there, right? So I was gonna have that, but yeah. Uh, the marquee light is not lit either, so I'm gonna have to check that out. And it's got a crack, so this is something I'll probably send off to, I don't know, like maybe Joe Sabo or something and see if he can do it. So yeah, this is, this is crazy, man. I can't believe, sorry, it's hotter than hell in here. I'm sorry for the shaky camera and all that stuff. It's just, even with there's the AC in here, it's just hot. It's just hot, guys. So, anyways, I appreciate you watching. I have an afterburner. I have an afterburner cockpit in my garage. You're supposed to have cars in your garage. You're supposed to have cars in your garage, not afterburner cockpits. Yeah, I don't know. We've done it all. We've said it all. I don't know what else to do. There's got to be a way to get it. I mean, it has to move if I like give it a little force, right? <laughs> come on, come, oh shit, oh shit. All right, that's not gonna work. Okay, this project is probably gonna need some community help. So if for some reason you are lucky enough to have some parts laying around for an Afterburner Deluxe and you can, I mean, I'll pay you for them, whatever, reach out to me at retroralph1980 at gmail.com or put a comment in the video, and hopefully we can restore this together. I don't know anything about these motors. I plugged it in, I blew a fuse, and I oh got the sweat in my eyes. It's a nightmare in here, man. But I got an afterburner cockpit. That's it, everybody. This is the end, and we will see you. I need your help. Oh, I need your help. The next one.